Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making a few changes to the way our cameras operate so that we can aim um, aim the ball before we launch it. Um, so let's jump right in. Now one of the things that I did as I was preparing for this video is I went and I backed up a little bit. Now this is something that I'm pretty poor at, I have to say. wish that I was better. Um, but I don't really plan things through before I start to go in. I, I like to jump in and start coding. So I backed up a little bit and I thought, all right, let's 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 work our way through an algorithm here. Um, so when you're making a game, you probably want to do that more often than than you really want to. You probably want to go through and, and plan some things out um, so you don't have to make too, too many changes um, in retrospect um, to the code that maybe you, you've implemented something the way that uh, it's not really going to work out. So um, I went ahead and did this in Notepad++. I, I, just, I like using it as my general uh, text editor. So for the ball algorithm, I thought, all right, so number one, um, I thought we're going to have a couple of different different kinds of cameras. And so depending on which one's active, um, there's going to be different things that we do. So um, there's going to be an overhead cam. There's going to be a chase cam. And so if we are in chase cam mode, then that means that we're we're right there looking at the back of the ball getting ready to launch it and so we're in a position to be able to aim the ball so number one if it's if we're in chase cam mode then we're going to go into the aiming functionality where we can move around number two is once we've gotten things aimed the way we want then we click to launch so when we launch the ball uh, the first thing we want to do is um, because we have this camera that we're going to be using to aim um, the camera will be what's actually moving and then once we have it aimed the direction we want, then we're going to um, use some function within Shiva to match the ball rotation to the camera rotation so that they're lined up. Um, and I should back up a little bit here and say there's also a third camera, which is called the aim camera, which is going to be the camera that actually does the aiming. And then once it's aimed, then the chase camera will follow the ball. So we match the ball rotation to the, the aiming camera. Uh, B is to match the chase camera to the aiming camera so that both are ready to go. And then C is to add the force to the ball in the negative Z direction. So that's what we've, we are already doing right now is we add that force and it launches the ball. Okay, so step three then is that once the ball is idle after launch, um, A, we're going to go in and return the ball to start. And then B, return the chase cam to start. And then it just loops back around. So now if we're in chase cam mode, then we go back to the aim and, and blah blah blah. So the reason why I thought about doing it in this way is that if we have an aim camera, we have a chase cam, and then we have the overhead cam, um, the aim cam is always going to be there. And so once you aim in a certain direction, I thought, well, um, you know, you've got it aimed and the idea is you want to be able to adjust objects in the level. You don't necessarily want to have to take and re-aim every time and see if you can get to the exact same point. So the aim camera, once it's aimed and locked in, it's not going to change. We can easily, when the ball resets, it comes right back and the aim is going to be right where you left it. Also, if we're in overhead um, view, you'll be able to move objects around in overhead view. You won't be able to aim the ball, so if you've previously aimed the ball and you want to switch to overhead view and then move objects around, then you can just hit the launch ball and it'll launch the ball um, where it's currently being aimed, um, where the last time you, last place you aimed it. So it's a way to be able to just stay in overhead mode and be able to follow the ball and see what's going on um, in case you like doing that instead. So with that in mind, um, so then I, I thought, okay, the couple of the, I, the models that we're going to need, well, number one, um, I added this extra thing in here, um, the idea that we'll be able to switch from overhead to chase at any time. So as the ball is bouncing around on the level, if you suddenly say, oh, I want to be able to switch to overhead, we should be able to do that and then vice versa. Now the models that we'll need, we're going to need the ball, which we have already. We'll need a chase cam, which we have already. So now we need to add the aim cam and the overhead cam. And then some of the AI that we're going to use, we'll need a chase cam AI for tracking and following the target, the aim cam AI for handling the aiming, and then the overhead cam AI is going to track the target also. Um, but also give us some other overhead functions like if you want to be able to zoom in and see things closer. So this kind of helped me to think about the structure of what I'm going to be doing. In fact, one of the things that it helped me to, to realize is that 
in this particular case, I want to get away from having the code, having code attached to the ball. So right now we have the ball actually has some behavioral code, but really, um, in essence, the ball you're just going to be pointing and shooting, and the ball is already a dynamic object. It has the physics built in. So let's move the code off of the ball and just let the ball do its thing. And we'll put the code in. Um, what I'm actually going to do is for this aim cam AI, I'm going to actually kind of dual. I'm going to handle the aiming and also make this the. Uh, I'm going to call this the player. So when you think about in the game, um, if you're getting ready to throw the ball, then in essence you're the the aiming camera. And then you know the chase camera and the other things are just other viewpoints, but really the player is going to be the aiming camera. So let's jump over to Shiva here and let's do that. Let's go over to code and let's add, um, let's create aim cam AI and hit OK. Okay, so the idea is since this is going to be our player, a lot of these functions that we had in the ball AI are now going to be in the aim cam AI. So we had, uh, first thing is on in it, which all it did was actually assign the object, the ball into the, um, you know, into the, um, the variable here. So we're going to do the same thing in here just to make it easier. So let's create uh, a ball. This is going to be an object. We'll add the handler which is on in it, and within that we're going to say uh, this hball equals application, um, and we're going to get the tagged object which is the ball. Okay, easy enough. So we've moved that over. Let's go back over to the ball AI. The next thing is we wanted to know whether or not the ball was in play, so we will move that over. It's still something that's important to know. Put false is the starting point. We also had the force that we're going to add to the ball. This kind of fits in with the <clears throat> idea that this camera is going to be the player because if you're throwing the ball, you're the one that's imparting the force upon the ball. So um, it makes sense to track this within this class. Um, the impulse, which is a number. We had originally set it to zero. We'll hit OK. Let's uh, collapse these down. Okay, so the next thing is we've already done the on in it. Let's do on enter frame. So there's not a whole lot of code here. All this one was doing was checking whether or not the ball um, was idle and whether it's in play, and then um, you know adding some um, dynamics and moving the ball and whatnot. So I'm just going to actually. I'm going to copy this entire chunk of code. We'll go over to the aim cam. We'll go to on inner frame and we'll paste it in here. I'm sure we're going to have to make a few changes, but there you go. And what else did we have on the mouse button down? Okay. So same thing. Let's copy and paste this code over. Copy. on mouse button down and we will paste this in. Oops. I copied it so let me go back over here and oops where am I? There we go. Let me recopy this. Copy paste. Save. Compile. Make sure there's no errors. Okay, so the first thing I need, know that I'm going to need to do is we had wired up the main AI to send our mouse button down events over to the ball AI. We now want this to go over to the um, aim cam AI. The other thing you'll notice here is that we need an object to send it to. So let's briefly jump back over to our scene. And let's add in the camera. This one's going to be called the aim cam. Okay, so we now have an aim camera. And let's move it into our scene. And I'm not going to worry about the position for right now, but I do want to go over to our attribute er editor, make sure I'm on the aim cam. 
let's right click edit selection tag and let's make sure we give this a name so we can reference it so going back over to the code tab um, let's do the same thing that we did on the um, the other thing where we had um, let's actually create a variable so this is going to be handle to our aim cam it's an object click OK and go back over to the on init for main and this is where we're setting up all of our objects so let's do this right after we do the chase cam let's call this um, aim cam application oh. tagged object oops what was that all right this is the aim cam okay so I've assigned that so I've got access to it from within the script so let's jump back over to the on mouse button down and send this event over to our aim cam okay so whenever the mouse button gets clicked down, the main AI is going to go ahead and send this event off to the aim cam, which is going to be responsible for launching a ball. So I got rid of that other line that was just a, giving us a reference to the ball because we don't need it anymore. Okay, so let's just make sure we have everything covered. So in the mouse, um, or in the main, we are sending the events over to the aim cam. And in the aim cam, we're saying if the um, ball is not in play, then, and you know what, we should probably check, we should probably, I'm going to change the name of this. Let's call this, um, ooh, ball in play, just so we understand what we're talking about here. Yes. Okay, so that's one of the nice things is if you do this, it refactors it automatically. So you notice that it changed the references to this variable in the scripts. So if the ball is not in play, then we set the ball in play to true. We enable the dy dynamics on the ball, and then we add the force to the ball. So everything's looking good so far. Um, let's go to the um, enter frame. Okay, so we check. The dynamics. So if it's if the ball is idle and the ball is in play, then we make it so that the ball is no longer in play. We turn the dynamics off and we move the ball back to the original play. So all that code should work, should make sense. Now the last thing that I want to do um, is go back to the main AI and we had that parse XML function that was feeding stuff into the ball AI, it was just basically that, that impulse value. So we're gonna change this. We're gonna say this dot the aim cam, and we need to have a string to the AI, which is uh, aim cam AI, and then an impulse was the same value, and so I think we are good. We can get rid of this line here because we're no longer getting a reference to our ball. So let's drag that over, aim cam AI, so that is on there now. Now let's see what happens if we hit play. Okay, so I clicked the button and we're still getting an error, so let me jump over. So it doesn't like the add linear impulse, so let's jump up to our code tab, let's see where we're at. Okay. Ah, so this code originally was assigned in the ball. So as you can see, this this dot get object um, is trying to refer to the originally it was the ball, but now this is a camera. So we're gonna we have to make sure that we call this the um, ball. So let's hit this. Control S to save F7. Now let's rerun it. And there we go. Okay, so it's still running. It's a little bit choppy, but we're going to go in and clean it up. So we've done our first step in getting the aiming going in the game. We've moved everything over into a different AI. So in the next video, we're going to flesh that out a little bit more. But anyways, we'll see you in the next video.